Welcome back, everybody. This is the Sphero Hackathon live from the Sphero offices. We've changed the environment because this is where the makerspace is going to be. So we're going to introduce you guys to a couple of the participants that did back the Kickstarter and were flown here to participate in the hackathon. Uh, I'm really excited to code and get to play with the new Sphero robot. And what do you like coding? What is your favorite part about coding? Um, I just, it makes sense to me, and a lot of other people, they're, they just don't get it, but for me, it just clicks. It's awesome that we got here in a, thun in a snowstorm. Um, my name is Beth. Uh, I'm a middle school teacher in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and um, I really like using the Sphero products in class because they are very, um, they can handle a lot of abuse. <laughs> and um, the interface for programming them is pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, my name is Brent. I'm from Maimea Middle School on the Big Island of Hawaii. And I basically found this on Kickstarter and I'm super excited that it's it's like the thing that I could have used many times. I did more open source type of robotics and all the different plat to try different platforms and it's it's so easy that we can just work on other problems and questions rather than worrying about building it and setting it up and figuring out which batteries to get and how to get the motors to run. Everything kind of runs and we can look at the problems that that it can address other than that. So. With a rover, um, you know, if there is a middle school student who has never touched a robot before, um, the just the chassis itself and then driving that chassis is really attainable. It's a, it's, it's a you know instant gratification attainable. I can then do more and you can build off it. But you know, I have a lot of students that come in and they've gone to summer camps or they have hobbies and then you can say, okay, you know, for you, special snowflake, um, I have a Raspberry Pi. And then, you know, they see these sweet, you know, breadboards and they're like oh wow you know I really have made the big time here and so it's it's expandable um, but still approachable does that make sense yeah totally what about you man uh, pretty much the same thing except I think um, just when you speak to different age groups also like I, I was actually at a k-12 school before and like I could see the potential for this being in an elementary school easily middle school definitely and then for high school you can even add all the complexity and and pick out what you need to solve a specific problem and that's it can all be student generated rather than just focusing on I have an idea you should try this it's gonna it can be generated from the students so yeah well thank you guys for taking the time to talk to us I'll let you go back to color coordinates and get that puzzle solved so my name is Garrett Gross I'm from Riverside Illinois it's a suburb of Chicago at St. Mary's School so hello students I hope you're watching and being good um, and uh, I uh, met Daryl yesterday, and uh, right now, like, do you want to talk about what we're working on? All right, so right now what we're doing is the bolt bypass with the infrared, and we're working on making the LEDs blink uh, at an appropriate time, and that uh, it will go through a course communicating with the um, serial bolt, and uh, to go through the course, and it's going to, like, diffuse, like, these um, spheral mines. So is this something that you can bring back to your classroom and do there? Absolutely. I, I love doing a lot of the infrared projects. Uh, a lot of my students have already seen what I've done with, uh, with them for having the, the Sphero Bolt communicate with the Arduino Uno boards. And um, we've had a lot of things that we've done with uh, you know, anything from robotic hands with infrared uh, controls. And so now with um, the rover, it'll be cool to be able to make it communicate for a lot of different uh, activities. I do, I do run a nonprofit. And we do workshops to teach um, STEM uh, to students, uh, partnering with the county library right now to offer these classes. So um, that's where this would tie in, would be having rovers and doing a workshop on programming. Cool. So just by the way that these uh, participants are using the rover right now is showing us how versatile the robot can be. And then we're going to see it drive once again. Uh, really cool there, actually, uh, being able to get out of the mulch uh, without, uh, without getting stopped. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. Well done, Quentin. You got it through on that first try. So that's just showing off the capabilities around the type of environments that you could program and drive your rover in. So let's go ahead and go to our next uh, little demo station here. The color group is going to be here in just a second, which is exciting. So we'll get to see them going there. So this challenge is called Bolt Bypass. And so Quentin, tell the folks at home what Bolt Bypass is. 
All right, so imagine yourself playing one of these games where you're in the prisons here and you have to escape and dodge the guards right there. So you're going to have a couple bullets going back and forth and they have a cannon, which is the infrared um, message that they can send and they basically are trying to catch you, trying to sneak out. So you're going to have to have the rover here and you're going to have one person driving, one person using the cannon uh, by pressing enter on the keyboard. So as rover is going to be driving, trying to sneak out past these bolts, it's going to be able to disable them and uh, by sending messages. But watch out, if you get caught by one of the messages that they emit, then you are caught and you have to start over again over there. Yeah, so the, the Bolts here, another Sphero product, uh, uh, towards the EDU program, a lot of, that's very, very popular in uh, schools all around the country, uh, has a nice little LED panel on it. And so it's going to represent when the bombs go off. And the Bolt is also very programmable as well. So uh, we got a lot of Sphero things going on. Can we get a little demo of this one? Um, briefly, because uh, they had need a Raspberry Pi to run with a program here, but I can show you what the program uh, runs here uh, with the infrared, for instance. So cool, let's do it. Start here, uh, real quick, start this program. So as you can see here, the boat is going to get started, patrol, verify if there are no rovers around, kind of take a little break, and then flash some green, orange, and red color, and as there's a splash of infrared, there's a splash from the matrix as well that happens. And uh, when rover will come, it will actually clear it, um, and we're going to have some messages to disable the, the bolt as the rover comes by. Yeah, we're going to get a team on this as fast as possible. We do have a team starting off on arguably, I think, my favorite event, and that is color coordinates. And... Our friend Quentin here is a little bit of a devious man, as this is probably the most difficult challenge that uh, that this is here because it's a it's a puzzle solver as well as some uh, programming. And so the way that this one goes uh, is each color represents a cardinal direction, and they can only represent that single direction. And you have to go from a certain block to another block. Good job, team. And it looks like they did it. Let's go ahead and <laughs> let's get it. Let's go ahead and reset it. And uh, Jenny, let's uh, let's. Let's have you talk us through this. Talk us through the process. Okay, so once we got all the um, the computer to recognize the um, actual colors, then we had to define the directions and figure out in the code what directions they were going to go. So we had to define it that way instead of just saying north and south and stuff like that. And so what you're doing is it's recognizing the orange, and then it's then talking to the computer that's on it to pick the direction to go as it tries to get to the yellow square on the very end. Um, uh, it's going the right direction, but it uh, got held up a little bit. There it is, it fixed itself. You know, sometimes you just gotta let it go, right? Just like in, uh, in, in parenting as well. And it's gonna get to the end. Set up in the classroom, yeah. yeah. I mean, at home and in the classroom and in your backyard, be great activities for that. I mean, all kinds of different mm -hmm. projects you could do with that. Um, especially with um, geometry and as the kids are learning that um, and their angle sometimes, you know, when you're drawing it on paper, it doesn't mean anything, but if you actually tell them, hey, I want you to go to 70. They got to think, mm, now what direction is 270? Which way does that go? And so they're figuring out the math in it and you're sneaking math in it and they don't even know it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, and you can also put like letters on there exactly. to teach uh, letter and number recognition along with the uh, along with the colors. And so we're going to have another uh, demo coming on. Again, if you guys weren't here for the first one, uh, the, the, the thingamabob at the top, the gyroscope. <laughs> Anonymeter is what I'm being told through the through the earpiece uh, is gonna spin, and then the robot will match its distance based on how it's spinning. And so this group is gonna give it uh, give it a shot. Um, at first, like with the using Python with it, because um, I wasn't too familiar with it. I've been doing a lot with like Arduino, so making sure that like the the language was uh, correct with like everything because it's very touchy. Um, but then once he got through with it. Um, Making sure that then uh, the the uh, wind speed was directly connected to the um, output of the uh, of the rover, so that it, it it didn't do anything where it went like too fast and then would go off the table or something like that. So well, let's see it in action. Let's 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 let it rip. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go with the blow technique on this run. We've seen balloons, we've seen uh, fingers, and you saw it just kind of burst off matching that speed. And this is some pretty good uh, some pretty good distance. We're close to the green line, which I believe has not been touched just yet. Did not quite get there. So close. So, uh, Lindsay, how are you feeling about this right now? I feel really good. Feel really, really good? Yep. Why? Because um, the bolts aren't feeling very strong right now. So our rover is just going to plow through them and do awesome.
We'll talk about uh, what classroom applications this might have, but Lindsay, first, like, what is the programming involved here? Yeah, so you need to use all of the IR emitters on the rover, and it's basically sending a certain message to the bolts. And if the bolt receives that message, then it becomes deactivated, and you can pass by smoothly. Um, the bolts are also sending messages back, and if the rover receives the message from the bolt, then it gets deactivated for a certain amount of time. Uh, let's see, the bolts are, you see one of the bolts in the back moving around, and you see him, uh, hey, th look at that, the reason why we're seeing high fives right now is the way that the bolts were, they were able to deactivate both bolts at the same time, so they're pretty much able to drive this manually through because their infrared was so good, and so let's see it drive through here in just a second. Let's see if it's going to be perfect. Not hitting any of the obstacles just yet. We're so close to the very end. Are you going to be able to complete it? Uh, oh, took the easy way out. <laughs> and that's what you call karma, folks. And so let's uh, <laughs> and so let's go over to uh, Jenny real quick. Uh, you've been, you've been on this a couple times, but now let's talk yeah. about. Uh, so you've got a background in education, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I teach uh, elementary, and middle school kids. Um, was homebound high, high school kids too, and um, so I've got a couple projects that I do with um, the Spiros that are actually this will be even better and much more complex with. Um, so they're doing races. You different. You make you make different tracks basically and different obstacles for them to go through, um, and you have like at least two, I would have two of them running at a time, and then the first one through wins the Primo Prize, whether that be the best po the best spot at the Super Bowl, or whether that is, you know, the Primo um, vacation spot right at the beach, you know, right there. Yeah. So, yeah, you have those races through. But you have different levels because different kids have different programming abilities, and then when you're throwing the math in there, you have to, you have to um, uh, accommodate for that also. So that way everybody's getting to do something at their level, but yet they're still being pushed and challenged. So for this challenge, we are uh, coding the robot to follow uh, light. So where the, wherever the light is brightest, the robot will drive towards that, and we're trying to lead it through the maze with the lights. We've had some issues with syntax, just with the code, uh, with some spelling. The variables have to be spelled properly, and uh, we had some issues with getting the code to work, but now I think it's working okay, and we're just trying to get the robot to test it. Does the color sensor get you excited in terms of like the, the sure. feature that it provides? Yeah, uh, that's definitely unique for this, for the rover. They in integrate the color so sensor with like the that. rover, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. awesome, well, it looks like you guys are gonna go back to the drawing board on some other challenges, but uh, thank you. Our last one. Oh, that's your last one? Well, congratulations, guys, for getting through the day. Um, I bought one for myself, and I'm really thinking about how I'm gonna buy it for my school, so that's basically what I'm trying to figure out, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do that, what I'm gonna say, and how I'm gonna pitch it, I guess. Um, well, I really enjoyed the, not because we won, um, but I really enjoy the color um, uh, tiles. Uh, I, it's a real, it's a capability of the rover that not I, I don't think any other robot has the identifying colors. So, you know, good job on the Spectrum's acquisition. Um, but uh, I, I also, so I backed one rover, and I really see two like as probably the way to get a lot of good learning and competition going. So again, I'm also like, hmm, I think we need to splurge for another just so that, you know, because they can talk to each other and they can talk to Bolt and they can talk to a lot of other stuff. So, yeah. And just trying to think of ways to leverage the, the build plates and you can hand out build plates to all of them and they can build their own projects and they can all come back together at the end and share it with just, you don't, you don't need like a rover per student, right? But you can buy build plates for a whole, for a whole bunch of them or something like that. So. You print some build plates yeah, if you can. print yeah. them or whatever, but yeah. Um, well, I was thinking maybe some kind of game with goals, uh, you know, on either end, and uh, you would maybe find a ball or some kind of something you can pick up and then deliver to your goal. And your goal would be, um, you know, one end and the other goal would be the other end for the teams. You could polarize the glass so you only see one end. And then, um, you know, you could get points based on how many balls you bring back. Uh, and so, you know, and then it, it could turn into like a whole semester leading up to this game that you're going to play. So you could, you know, work very incrementally 
It's, 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 they could design the game. Right, you're designing the game, the then you're, and yeah, the rules, and then they, they decide the rules and things like that. So you're really giving the power to the students rather than just, you know, telling them. Um, just getting to use um, the new rovers and figuring out what I could do with them and how I can take them into the classroom, how I can use them with my grandkids, um, all of that. Just, you know, ideas are pinging left and right all over the place. Get it for your classroom. I mean, things you'll be able to do, whether it's, you know, I was thinking of um, the, uh, the trigonometry trigonometry and some of the upper higher level math um, that the high schoolers can do, especially with the programming of um, the lights and the wind speed and all that stuff. Really? Yeah, down, but it's simple enough. You can do things like, you know, with the second and third grader easily. Easily. We really like um, taking like things and, uh, you know, just uh, remixing and like hacking and, and uh, adding on to them and Rover is so expandable and it allows us to do exactly that. Um, it really is like um, that was uh, Ryan said in the Kickstarter video. It was the it was the robot for the people with it because it it really um, allows people to use all different sorts of like um, devices like you have know, the micro bits, Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, and just build onto it. And it just has this unlimited potential. I mean, I've used Sphero and Ali in so many different ways, and this even like raises the bar even more. And I see that it's um, really well with, works really well with the younger audience too, because I really liked what I saw with like the color maze mm -hmm. and uh, that really allows like the younger audience to, to work with it and uh, do activities that normally seem like when using a rover would be like too sophisticated and, and just too difficult for them. And with the, uh, you know, out of the box um, setup that it has, it allows you know, the younger younger children to be able to use it more easily. And it, it doesn't look intimidating or yeah. it, it, it has that nice, you know, that, that spheral look to it where it has that nice clean look to it where it's, it's able to, um, you know, be very inviting for young programmers. It, it was the, the fact that um, it, it is open source, that, you know, it's not going to be um, abandoned and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very inviting for a community of developers. And that just lets it live on. Um, I love that it has a, uh, a removable battery. And so you're just able to, um, you know, swap it out easily. And then you don't have to worry about uh, you know, when when the battery's toast, that like that's all there is to it. So you can easily, um, you know, keep you know keep the fun going with it. I've backed probably 75, 80 projects on Kickstarter, so I've had a few fail. I've had some really good successes. So knowing this was a product with Sphero was like a big plus. Um, and now, you know, I've, since I've been here, I've seen all the hard work that goes into it. So really appreciate that. Once once I have Rover at home, um, I'm definitely going to be trying to do some uh, machine learning, hooking hooking up with the uh, Rover and interface with the Raspberry Pi and a camera, the data from the Rover, and uh, try to come up with like an autonomous driving Rover. That's a big project I'm going to work on. We had a blast. It's been wonderful. Everyone here has been great to work with and so generous. I had so much fun. This was a really great experience. It's so much more than just a robot. You really get to dive in and do some amazing things with it. So if you're thinking it might not be for you, just go for it and give it a try. I was really excited to see a robot that was expandable that you could add on to. You don't just open it and play with it for like a couple of days and then it's like, now what? You can just keep going with that. That's my favorite part. Honestly, after today, there's so many things that my mind's just kind of spinning. There's a lot of stuff. I'm excited to see what we can discuss on the ride home. I definitely want to 3D print some parts and try to get a ball thrower for the dog. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for participating. But that is it for today's broadcast. That is it for me. My name has been Crystal Sard, your host, and I'm signing off for the last time.